Okay, praise the Lord, everyone. Can you hear me? Just raise your hand. So I know you're okay. All right. So last time some audio problem was there, but by God's grace, I believe today everybody is able to hear me. Now for today's portion, we are going to read. I believe everyone must have read First Corinthians every day, and uh, we'll continue to do that for a couple of Bible study. So today we are going to read from First Corinthians. I mean, Second Corinthians, chapter one, from verses one to four. Second Corinthians, chapter one, from verses one to four. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and God of all comfort who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. This is the second time uh, for the Bible study from 2 Corinthians. And Lord, I totally come under the power of the Holy Spirit and under the sprinkling of your blood. Lord, today we need to hear your voice. We want to hear and be obedient to you. Lord, many times we have read so many, this, this portion many times, but many times we may not have understood in a proper way. So today you lead us and guide us and teach us. So Lord, we may learn more things about you and Lord, that may open our mouth to praise, worship, and glorify you. So bless thy word. From the very beginning to the end, you may take full charge of it. In precious and most worthy name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So uh, today, uh, I'm just, we'll, uh, I'm going to, all right, let me. All right, so we are going to study from this portion, verses one to four. And uh, we'll take section by section. And uh, if you're not able to write, and if you want to again go to study this uh, portion for today, you may always go to the YouTube from Bethany and you may continue to do that study from there. So I'm going to first verse. All right. So first verse we see the greeter. That means the one who is greeting. Okay. And in that only I've given two 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 part two part apostle and the associate. Now the primary greeter is the author, author of the apostle. So here we see, first of all, Paul is saying, I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, apostle means a messenger. He was a messenger of God. And this is an official office with extraordinary authority in the early church history. He is an apostle of Lord Jesus Christ. First, his apostleship is the apostle of Lord Jesus Christ who came and died for us. And Paul even did not believe in Jesus Christ. But how wonderfully, as we will see later on, how he became an apostle. So, second thing is we see is authority. He says, by the will of God. So in first verse, it, 
It speaks about his apostleship. He's an apostle of Lord Jesus Christ. And secondly, he's talking about by the will of God. Very much important, you know, in our life, the will of God. Because most of the time we do things in our own way. Many times we want to know the will of God. And then we try to wait upon to know the will of God. Whether, and then sometimes it takes a long, long time, maybe month, two months, three months, and our patience is gone. Then what we do? He says, okay, Lord, you're not talking with me. You're not showing me your will. I will do what is right, not bad. And then we continue to do our way. But that's what many God's servant has thought, especially by the boxing. He always did the will of God. You know, when he was here a long time back and uh, his hair was growing longer and longer. And then he was waiting upon the Lord to know the will of God. And the Lord was not giving permission to go to the barber to cut his hair. Then one day the Lord said, okay, go and cut your hair. And he went to the barber to cut the hair. And while the barber was cutting the hair, he asked the barber, are you born again? And the barber said, no, brother, I am not born again, and I want to know how I can be born again. And our brother gave him the word that barber's name was Bob. He accepted Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what happens when we do according to the will of God. But because we are very impatient people, so we have to understand the will of God is very much important. Now, this office could not be assumed by, by anyone. You know, anybody cannot come and take an apostleship. It has to be appointed by God himself. Paul was apostle by the will of God. And we cannot go higher than any other will. God's will is the highest. And he went by the highest will of God. That is the highest will and he knew that author, this authority has been given by God. So it makes no difference where you are. It makes no difference how you are or what your circumstances may be. We are in a wonderful place when we come under the will of God. Coming under the will of God is very much important. And Paul many times prayed, if it is God's will, I will come and visit you. So, Paul gives us an example of doing the will of God. And I don't have to go back and bring an example of Lord Jesus Christ. He always did the will of the Father. And it was always a blessing. Now again, doing the will of God doesn't mean that everything will be good for us. It will work out good for us. No. Lord knows what is best for us. So we have to accept the will of God. Now, Paul identified himself as an apostle by the will of God. See chapter 10, verse 8. Chapter 10, verse 8. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority. See, authority the word. Though I should boast some more of our authority which the Lord had given us, which the Lord has given us, is clarifying, you know, you remember that this second Corinthian is defending his apostleship when the false apostles had come. There are many things which he defended, but I only gave a few of them last Tuesday, because if I go, it will take a long time just for the introduction. And also, he not only visited the church at Corinthian just in the second missionary journey and then in the third, second time, but he already visited three times. In between the first and the second missionary journey, he also went to Corinth, but we will see later when we come to that portion. So authority has to come from God. Now, 
three things which we want to clarify is regarding his apostleship. He is not an apostle because he decided, oh, I want to become an apostle. Or he was nominated by somebody else or by himself to be an apostle. No, it was by the will of God. And that we see in Galatians 1, 15 and 16. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach among him the heathen, among the heathen immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. I did not confirm with flesh and blood. It was God who had given me this authority and it was by the will of God. Secondly, as an apostle, he knows himself to be sent by God to speak God's word. He was sent by the will of God to speak God's word. In, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 17. 2 verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. See, he says we do not corrupt the word of God, but as sincerely, but, uh, but of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ. That's the authority given, and I'm speaking the word of God. That's why he says, for we are not as many, you understand? We are not as those apostles who say they are apostles, and I am not, I'm talking about those many people, see, he says, we are not like them, as many which corrupt the word of God. They may be corrupting the word of God, but not me, because authority has been given to me by God. And the Lord is the ultimate judge who will judge me. You say I'm not an apostle, but let God judge. So he's bringing three things to show that he is an apostle of Lord Jesus Christ. Then secondly, in that in verse 1, he's not only talking about who are the greeter. First of all, the greeter is an apostle himself. Secondly, he talks about the other greeter and is the associate, and that is Timothy, our brother. Second Corinthians 1 and 1. First of all, his description, that means he gives by name. He doesn't say, oh, myself and other brothers who are with me. No. He specifically gives the description of who is also giving you the greeting. And that is Timothy. So Timothy was like a son to Paul. In Acts chapter 16 and 1, it shows us, and we are not going into that uh, uh, reading, but he was from Lystra and Derby area, and he was a convert of Paul on the first missionary journey that you will see in Acts 14 and verse 6. But I'm not going. His father was a Greek, Acts 16, verse 1. But his mother was a very godly mother. Her name was Eunice, and her grandmother, Louis were Jews. Both of them were Jew. Father was a Greek. But he was a very strong Christian and a faithful worker with Paul. How wonderfully, you know. Paul writes the name of Timothy and he says, our brother. Our brother. How wonderfully, though he as an apostle, he was much higher. And Timothy was very young. But how we knew that in Lord Jesus Christ, we are all brothers or sisters. This is our brother. How much we have to learn in the local church where we go. Or many times we are biased, you know, where regarding if different color person comes or different language person comes. Oh, we don't associate too much, but they are our brother. You cannot say no in that matter. So we have to come to a greater understanding who is our brother. So 
we see the background of Timothy. Also, Timothy was also known to Paul very affectionately as my son in faith. So 1 Timothy 1 and 2, it says, you are my son in faith. And in 1 Timothy 1 and 18, it says, my dearly beloved son. Not only is talking about a brother, but it was his son. He was like a father to him. But at the same time, when he's greeting, he's bringing on the same level which we see here. So here, see the humbleness of Paul. Just in the greeting itself, it reminds us. Now, this is the greeters who greeted 2 Corinthians, who, who are the one who is greeting. Okay, So these are the greeters, two of them, Apostle and Timothy. Right now we go to the second. Who are whom he is greeting to? The person who are greeted he is greeting first of all to the church. He says the church of God. See, in first verse it says, first is the character of the church whom he is greeting, the church of God. Church of God. What is the church of God? You know. He's talking to the first group of believers in Corinth, which compromised the church in his first missionary journey when he was there for 18 months. Now church, we know, it comes from the word ecclesia, means called out people. So he's greeting to the church of God, nobody else that we will see there. So now, Church is not a gathering of like-minded individuals with a religious band. There may be religious people and they come together. That doesn't become a church. There are many so-called churches where it may be jam-packed, but they may not be believers. And if they are not born again, you cannot call them a church. They are not called out people. So we have to be very careful to understand what church is. And again, church is not a building. Church is a group of believers who have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So here, the character of the church is the church of God. This is God's church. Many times we have, must have heard, many must have said, this is my church. Oh, I did a lot of laboring for this church and it is my church. It's not my church. And sometimes they act as if it is their church, but they forgot that it is God's church. Never ever say, this is my church. Or sometimes we may also say, I'm going to my church. Not my church. It is God's church. He is the head. We are just the member of the body of Christ. And why? Because the Lord has purchased that church by his precious blood. See Matthew 16, verse 17 and 18. Matthew 16, 17 and 18. Matthew 16, 17 and 18. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjuna, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. My church, and the gates of hell shall never prevent against it. My church. How big is that church? Just think of a universal church. Everyone born again, get together, becomes a universal church. Yes, we have a local church, but that local church is within the universal church. So here is greeting in the character of the church is the church of God. Secondly, whom he is greeting not only to the church of God, but a particular people who are there. And that is the community which was and that is Corinth. So he writes to a particular church. Though Corinth was in Achaia, I told you it was Greece, 
northern, southern, all part belong to Greece. And also in Achaia, there were other churches. There was a church at Crenshia, uh, which was a port. But he's particularly greeting to the church at Corinth. But at the same time, he's also greeting to the Christians, not only to the church which is at Corinth, particularly he's writing to the Corinth church at Corinth, but it also for every other person have to take care. Otherwise today we will say, oh, this letter was written to Corinth, so what is there for me? It is only for the Corinthian believer, not for me. No, the whole Bible is for us. So even if it was written for Corinth, and mainly it was written for Corinth because what they were doing, but it was also for the other local church in that area. You have to do what I'm writing you. So with all the saints which are in Achaia, so he's talking, he says, those who are in Achaia, whole area, this letter is also for you and I want to greet you also. How wonderfully all greets. So this is the greeting. And now we see the greeting. Greeter was Paul and Timothy. Greeted was the church of God and the other Christians who were there. Now let us see in verse two and four, we will see the salutation in the greeting. Salutation in the greeting. Let me go back to Second Corinthians because I cannot see the slide of the, so I have to. Verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So the greeting is grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. And we read the following, the salutation in the greeting. What is the salutation in the greeting? Grace be to you and peace. Grace to you and be peace. So there are three things which we see from here. First, the standard in the salutation. And what is that? Grace. Now, grace was a standard Greek greeting. Greek people was a standard way to greet was grace. And peace was the standard greeting of the Hebrew people, the Jewish people. And even now, if you meet some Jewish people, they will always say Salom, that is peace. Second, the sequence. Sequence means why grace is before peace. Why peace is not first and why grace only is first. Paul uses these greetings in every episode. And he will always use this grace and peace. Grace always comes before peace. Now, grace is favor. which the Lord gives. Grace means what we don't deserve. And peace comes from grace. Without grace, let me see if I can. Okay. So without grace, there cannot be peace. That's the greatest joy because because Lord Jesus Christ died for us and by his grace we have been saved, we have peace with God. Romans 5, 1, you know, we have peace with God. So peace of God doesn't come without grace. And really we want to thank you. This salutation, this greeting itself, and the sequence in this, it should, this is our praise, isn't it? Lord, by your grace I am saved and thank you for the peace you have given. Now tell me any of us who are present over here, you don't have peace because you did not have, you have grace and that's why you have peace. No matter what circumstances we go through, the Lord always gives us peace. But not only that, but don't we have a peace that Lord, because of your grace, I will be in heaven. And that gives a great peace to us. Many people in this world, they don't have this grace. And because of that, they have no peace. But we thank the Lord, how wonderfully the Paul brought this. Now, grace is the fruit. Is, grace is the root. 
and peace is the fruit. Without root, you cannot get fruit, right? Any tree you see, you has to got root. So grace is the root. Think about a tree going deep down. This is your grace. And because of that, the fruit is peace. So we thank and praise the Lord how wonderfully the Lord brings. So grace, we get salvation and thereafter we get peace. Now, the source of salutation. What is that? Grace and peace from God, our Father, and from... What is the source of that grace? Grace and peace come from God in Jesus Christ. Without that, you cannot have grace and peace. So we want to thank the Lord. Lord, you know, peace is not peace that passeth all understanding. This is not an ordinary peace. It is when we have the God of peace, then we will have the peace of God. And that's why wonderfully, the source of salutation never forget that this grace comes from God the Father. So the, now the solace in the greeting. Now blessed, always the word blessed is, is a, a, what do you, they call it, um, in the theological term, it's a doxology. And here he uses blessed in the very beginning, blessed, be God of all comfort. So what is the solace in this greeting? He is greeting grace and peace and everything. But what is the solace? What peace do we get in this greeting? In that we see first the person of solace is God. Person of solace is God. Without God, we can never have peace. And secondly, the place of solace is what? And I was thinking about that who comforteth us in all. What is that place where he gives the solace? Here, in tribulation. When we go through the tribulation, see, God who comfort us, who, that is God, comfort, mark that word, us. He's not talking about the unbelievers. He's, Paul is including himself with all the believers in Corinth, Corinth and also us and all other churches which he established. Us, when he comforts, not that when we are always joyful and everything, or those who are not born again, they will never be able to get comfort from God. So the place of solace is during the time of tribulation or affliction when we are going. And Paul is writing this because he went through all that problem. See, when God helps us, we are, we are in trouble or in affliction, but man's help is limited only during good times. Now, Paul went through so many problems. If you read the book of Acts, there were many plots against him. He went through riots. There was mob violence. I, I'm not going through the verses, but because we have read Acts, we all know that. False accusation came against him. He was imprisoned shipwrecked, stoned, so many tribulation and affliction he went through. But what God did, God comforted him in all that. And we thank the Lord. Many times we go through many problems, but isn't it God comforts us in all those problems? And then we get a joy even in our tribulation because of God who is a comforter. We want to thank the Lord that he gives us the joy. But he's the father of mercies also. He's the father not only comforter, but he's the father of all mercies. Now we're going to see why he says father, you know. He's a mercy and I was thinking about it, even though I'm born again. Every day if, if his mercy is not with me, that means he does not give what I deserve. Every day by thoughts, words and deeds, I've been thinking, Lord, so many times I'm not being obedient to the word of God. And what I should get punishment from you. 
but i i receive his mercy every time he doesn't give me what i deserve and i want to thank the lord that his father of mercies all mercies and that same goes for you and me so he comforts us in our tribulation and paul had gone through all this thing and that's why he can very boldly say he comforts us when i was in tribulation and not only me but all of us and in what all our tribulation affliction is going to do that not only a part of our tribulation but all that is a greater maturity with paul who is writing so he is writing who comfort the place of solace is god who comforts us then god is a god of all comfort and i was thinking about comfort you know now in the ancient uh, uh, the word which is translated for uh, for tribulation in the greek word it means pressure when we are in pressure in our life and we all go through that you know every day something or other comes and we are under pressure so throughout all stress persecution trial which paul experienced in his turbulent life paul experienced god comforting strengthening presence and what is the purpose of solace this is very much important why he is comforting us for what reason once we are comforted we forget about it no the purpose of solace is that that we may be able to comfort others which are in any trouble how we are going to comfort them by the comfort we ourselves was comforted of god so god makes us a comforter he does not leave us there god is already a comforter he comforted me and you during the time of pressure affliction suffering and we we understood what was the comfort of god then god says okay they forget about it no he's not saying that forget about it now i you i am making you comforter so if others are going through any problem comfort them how many times we don't do this you know ah oh, let them do whatever they want you know a you know if somebody is going through problem how many times we have taken up a phone and called that brother or sister and said sister i know or oh brother i know you are going through a problem lot of pressure is there lot of affliction is coming to you but i know i have gone through all this and i have learned the comfort of god is a great comfort if you have not been comforted you will never be able to comfort other people and god says i am going to comfort in tribulation now remember that god is not going to comfort anybody and when we go through tribulation and pressure it is when we believe on lord jesus christ when we stand upon the word of god when we want to honor god then only we will go through tribulation if you are according to the people of the world there is no tribulation for us there is no affliction for us there is no pressure but at your workplace at in your school in your college you stand for the word of god and they will hate you there when when they hate you and they say everything against you or they want to do everything against you god will comfort you there so that's why we have to thank the lord no matter and so many brothers and sisters are going through that pressure right now in tribulation being afflicted by the people of this world we usually don't go through that you know but when we stand upon the word of god at least we can stand upon the word of god and through that we have to go through tribulation we have to tell the truth many times we don't want to tell the truth because we will be in problem but if we are really standing on the word of god and we suffer for the word of god the lord is going to comfort us and take care of us and then we can tell other people brother i also had the same situation i went through the same situation you are going through but during my situation god came and comforted me he is the person of solace god and i i i am 100% sure and because he comforted me i also want to tell you god will really comfort you and take care of you so comfort comes 
when we are when we are already in problem when i was thinking of comfort you know see this uh, verse uh, saul went through so many problems samuel in uh, saul went through so many problem you know he did not want to give up his kingship his kingdom he wanted his son jonathan to take over and after jonathan his children may take over so he did not want to give up that and because he knew see that he is going to uh, 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 david is going to take over uh, uh, the kingdom he tried to harass david and what happened the lord's presence was there now uh, if you read the initial part of king saul, uh, saul he he was a good man he was filled with the spirit he preached he was prophesying and he was a good man but when he was thinking about his own self he went through problem the spirit of god went away from him and an evil spirit came upon him and what happened was he been comforted by god no he was not comforted by god even he at the end of his life he tried to go to the person who was looking uh, through that uh, witch uh, witchcraft and who were looking at the in the in that uh, uh, let's see we go to first samuel chapter 28 in that you will see that he, she goes first samuel chapter 28 and verse 6 so paul goes to the witch in verse 6 says and when saul inquired of the lord the lord answered him not neither by dreams nor by urim nor by prophet he had no comfort is coming from him because he was doing his ways so god doesn't comfort us when we are doing our own way when flesh takes over he only comforts us when we are walking according to the word of god you know as i said that we don't wait for the will of god and that's what saul also did in first uh, corinthian first uh, samuel 13 or 14 i think when uh, he was uh, saul was supposed to come and do the sacrifice before they go to the war and samuel delayed in his coming and paul himself took and sacrificed as a priest and immediately samuel came and said what did you do Saul, why did you do all this thing? He says because you did not come, and people were scattering here and there, and I had to do that. He did not wait it upon the will of God. He had to wait it upon the will of God. That sec only Samuel can do it. Waiting is very difficult. And what happened? Samuel said, "Your kingdom is taken away from you." And when he was in trouble, God never comforted him. Then God brought David before him. He played hard, and he felt good. but how david was comforted by lord for so many years he was running from year and there in wilderness and wilderness in this place and that place but even his difficult situation god comforted him see the greatest psalm which we like him like is psalm 23 psalm 23 when david was in trouble to four i will read it you follow in your bible the lord is my shepherd see how god you remember the person of solace is god here he is saying the lord is my shepherd and i shall not lack anything he maketh me to lie down in green pasture he leadeth me beside the still water he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake all this is comfort coming from god and then he says hey i do i walk through the valley of shadow of death whether there is tribulation affliction suffering i will not fear any evil why for thou art with me and what thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me so we thank the lord god is a god of all comfort so the purpose we serve the person of solace is god the place where he gives comfort is in tribulation and what is the purpose of giving us that trouble or peace that lord may make us comforters like him so we may comfort other people in first second corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 blessed be god even the father of our lord jesus christ 
who comforts us in all father of mercies and god of all comfort so we have to remember what god is to you so he starts with this blessed be the lord is a doxology god is in control of all our circumstances and paul learned that praise is an important factor in achieving victory over discouragement and depression now discouragement and depression is a tool used by satan and during this time we have to remember what god is to you and me uh, there is a story going on that satan had so many books written by him and he puts it on auction or selling the books and everybody is coming and buying that books but there was one book he said no everybody asking i want that book i want that book and he says no i cannot give that book he says why you don't give that book you know we want to buy that we'll give you whatever money you want and he says no that is my tool that is the book of discouragement when i discourage people they go away from god they don't pray they don't worship they don't read the word of god so depression discouragement that is the tool but david learned paul learned remember what god is to you in the time when problem comes we have to praise him as prayer changes thing praise also changes thing so we have to praise god we have to praise god why praise him because he is god he is the god who is who has given us life uh, i don't want to go into detail but there are two places where uh, paul writes there are three places which he write he writes blessed be god first let's see in first Thess- uh, ephesians 1 and 3 we'll see just quickly go through that ephesians 1 3 now this uh, it's very wonderful if you read it properly ephesians 1 and 3 Blessed be the God and Father for Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So, God, God, uh, Paul is praising God for the past. You know, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Who has already blessed us? God has already blessed us. And then, one Peter one and three, same. Use one Peter one and three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has already brought. So here we see Peter praise God for future blessings. And in Second Corinthian year is. blessing god for the present blessed be the god even the father right now is blessing so we have to remember what god is to us we have to praise him because he is our god we have to praise him because he is the father of lord jesus christ you know satan is the father of liar we don't want to go into any detail but satan is the father of liar he lies and also there are many other thing if you see in uh, old time genesis 4 and 21 it says he uh, jubal was one who uh, made instrument and he became the father of musical instrument so those who starts anything becomes a father of that thing satan started sin is a father of sin but the god is the god of all mercies is the father he begin that everything comes from there the beginning of mercy comes from him and then praise him because he is the father of mercy and praise him because he is the god of all comfort four praises we can do in this particular verse second corinthian 1 praise him because he is god blessed be god see praise him because he is the father of lord jesus christ you know i always thank in my worship i always thank god in my daily lord father i can call you abba father why you know because of lord jesus christ because lord jesus christ i am in lord jesus christ if i am in lord jesus christ and if the lord calls you father 
I am also calling you father. I thank you, father. What a privilege you have given to me. Am I worthy? No. But because of my Lord Jesus Christ, I can call you father. So he is the father of Lord Jesus Christ and is my father. Then he is the father of all mercies. And every day, I was when I was thinking, Lord, every day, if your mercy, you take out mercy from me, I'm gone. You, I will be punished for everything I do. I will have to pay for all things I do. But you do not give me what I deserve every day. And praise him because he's the God of all comfort. Four praises you can do from verse three. Praise him because he's God. Praise him because he's the father of Lord Jesus Christ. My father because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for me. Praise him because he's the father of mercies. And praise him because he's the God of all comfort. So remember all these things, so many things we went through. And uh, now I hope you can go through YouTube if you want to write down all the details of different verses. I divided into each verse into so many things. Maybe the Lord speak with us. And also I'm doing this Bible study. It is just the beginning. So I will have to see how I have to go through this Bible study. Uh, do I have to make any changes in the Bible study? I don't know. I will, maybe I can ask many of them your feedback on this Bible study. It's not that because you will tell me, do it this way, I'll do it. No, I'll pray about it all the time to see if it is edifying you, edifying me. If it's not edifying, then the Bible study is of no use. If it is not giving me the privilege to look at my own self and change, then this Bible study is of no use. So Bible study is always for the own good that we may become more and more like Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord speak with all of us and uh, I will take AB to take over.